Well, continuation on the log, 3.44 in the morning, West Coast time. It's still Thursday, the 25th of July, 2024. Oh, yeah. I'm hearing uh, from the corporate media, especially early in the morning, that Joe Scarborough is going off the mouth again. Sometimes I can deal with a guy, and other times I can't deal with him, and I know he's ultra-patriotic at this point over here. Yeah, I did see some of the pictures and some of the videos concerning about uh, the United States flag being burned in protest. And then they had the Israeli flag burned on the news. But I didn't realize that there would have been a Palestinian flag being put up, raised up in the capital. That and the vandalism done. That I got an issue with. That I got an issue with. So one thing you're trying to understand about the Palestinian situation happening. I mean, shit, their country got taken over 80 plus years ago, more than that, by the United Nations, trying to develop uh, a land for the displaced Jewish nation to have a nation, but displaced the country to do so in the first place. And then 80 years of going back and forth on each other. Till it culminates till we have this situation happening in Israel. We got terrorism happening on both sides and genocide happening. And I can't stand dealing with that coming into the Congress and saying that it's okay to do genocide to another people we just conquered 80 years ago. And that, but yeah, it makes me sympathetic. But, you know, I try to put things in a bit of a perspective at this point. This is done by UN, United Nations Charter, and Palestinian people had other foreign governments governing their territories for a long while, prior before the creation of Israel, and Gaza, and West Bank in there. And they had never been able to get a two-state solution going. It's either one or the other, and they must destroy each other. While well, innocent people on both sides get their asses kicked, or worse, killed. So Netanyahu goes into Congress, appeals to the Republican Party at this point. Because he wants them in control, so he can deal with them. Despite the fact that genocide is happening at this point over here, and I do blame Biden on that one, I, I'm sorry, I I do. Yeah, we have something. We have a treaty. We got something going on with Israel that we support, defend the country of it, if we could. But putting other people at risk. See, that's the thing. I kept trying to understand more about the damn protests we had over the summer and over the last year. <clears throat> all that damn activity happening last year when Hamas decided to do this stupid thing that unleashed this thing out of the box we can't put back in. A lot of anger, a lot of hatred. Tearing a country apart left and right. It's turning the Middle East into a war zone of, of sorts. If not physically putting a hell of a lot of strain on the country so either support or war with Israel. But we're supposed to be and this is the hard part of trying to understand what's the distinction here. Either you're considered a Zionist or, or you're anti-Jewish. It's not it's not religion. I don't have a problem concerning about someone else having another religion. That's their biz. Not mine. Try to force it down my throat. It's a different story altogether. But coexisting? There's no problem with that. No, when you have a government system that's totally uh, entrenched and cannot be moved except by violence and force and then unleashing their own 
response on that one by destroying other people who got in the middle of the way. And then I had to understand the Palestinian situation happening in Gaza and in the West Bank, left and right, more and more. They never wanted, I guess, to develop the two-state solution in Israel. It was always one over the other, and there could not have been cooperation, commingling. Had to be one or the other. Talk about war in the Middle East. That's war. Yeah, two clashing and destroying a paradise into, into something. And people had to suffer through the damn shit. I kept looking at the Gaza situation regarding the Palestinian people in there. Why do they support Hamas so much? Why did they know about these guys, and why didn't they turn their asses in? They were afraid of the gunfire, they were afraid of getting themselves killed. The lives they've been trying to struggle with now are basically blasted away by Israel's ven uh, vengeance against people taken and brutally, brutally harmed. And they looked at the Gaza Strip as its foreign body there, influenced by foreign countries, enemy to Israel. They must be destroyed. Trying to hold off on the civilian casualty by creating a, uh, more issues with it. By creating some of a public relations nightmare, saying, oh yeah, we got food coming in. No, you don't. Well, we got food coming in. Look at the, look at the publicity shots we got here. People are starving to death. People are having genocide. Nobody gives a shit. No wonder the UN is having a conniption fit over the Middle East situation right now. And the United States is struggling with this. Not to mention the NGOs on this one. But Netanyahu had to come in and say, Well, look at the look what they're doing to your grounds over here. This is a disgrace. No. This is America, asshole. See, in our country, we have the First Amendment rights, but there's only so far we can go with them without it violating everybody else's civil rights, and we can't have that. Destruction of property is not, is not an option, but, you know, that's a local thing right there. Look at, look at the local officials on their ass on that one. But no, what pisses people off is American flag getting replaced by the Palestinian flag. That I sh that'd be pissed off about. That I would be pissed off about. Because this is supposed to be the American flag up there always. In our country, in our sovereign territory. And yeah, I know that people are pissed off enough regarding the American flag getting burned in any way, shape, or form. Except if it's an old flag, torn, dragging, and dirty that has got to be destroyed because that's the tradition we have. It's not a law, it's tradition. And people don't keep forgetting that. There had been court cases and U.S. codes created in order to have the United States flag used as a protest vehicle and for when situations call for it. And they do at times. We look at the Vietnam War as one of them. And it pissed off a hell of a lot of people that the American flag was being burned up because there was a point trying to be made at that time. When you had our people back in the 60s protesting what we did to a country that attacked our country by attacking and trying to sink a ship. Tonkin Bay. And they had a Tonkin Bay resolution. Give the United States... Uh, a reason to go to war again. As if we already had enough of it anyway. But we wanted to battle the Red Scare, the Red Menace, inside the country. Now we met, battle it outside the, outside the country. So, yeah, and we saw what was being done in that process. That's why people were nuts. That's why people are going nuts already. Almost in a year. Almost coming up to a year because of the situation happening. So how are we not supposed to be able to deal with that? 
We look at it, red, white, and blue as the ultimate colors. It's sacrosanct. It's made in stone. No, it wasn't. We didn't have an amendment on it. We had U.S. codes, federal laws, indicating that, yes, we can, in protest, burn the American flag to tell the U.S. government or local government, I disagree in the strongest terms that's going to catch your attention. It'll piss people off left and right, but good. Because maybe they'll listen to our, our situation here. But no, they'll look at it as an act of war. We are so enamored with our own colors that sometimes we can't see it's going to be used as a point of protest. And that can never be done. Because people will have a situation with us. Now, they're probably considering me as pro-Palestinian. I am pro-people at this point, and seeing the Palestinian people going into extinction, I don't jive with that. I don't. But I don't jive with the fact that the, if this is being manipulated by other foreign powers, I don't jive with that one either. But I'm not going for genocide or extinction at this point. There's got to be a better solution on this shit. It's not either this or that. Because both sides don't win, especially when both sides are ashes. In one context or another. Meaning that if this war gets worse off, are we going to be battling ourselves even with blood? Yes, we have issues with our own situation, with our own discrepancies, our own differences. We're not one pure religion. We can't be. We were created to have, to be pluralistic, to accept differences, to work with them, not in harmony, but just work with them. Period. We don't listen to that shit, do we? No. How dare we? So when I see the Palestinians or the supporters of the Palestinians desecrating our own landscape, no, that's not protesting. That's desecration. That's vandalism. You're burning a flag. That's one thing. Replacing it with another country's? No, you don't do that. There are lines I even don't cross. I don't even do that. I am sympathetic to the pleas of Palestine, to, to the Palestinians. I am sympathetic to their cause. It should have been a two-state solution. I still like that idea. I still want that one. But one state and trying to do a genocide over people, I don't support that. And I don't support my government doing that. Which means I tell them to go to hell on that one. Sometimes it's very hard for me to hang up an American flag if I got a major disagreement with the country and how the administrations are being run, how the local administrations are being run, how they try to tell people that you got to follow this in the classroom because we say so. Here's a Bible. You're going to learn it in a public education classroom. You don't like it, your teachers will get fired. Plain and simple. They have to be taught religion. It goes against the federal constitution. It goes against the First Amendment. Oh, they swore to protect the defended constitution? Bullshit. Their own interests, their own pocketbooks. So when that's being produced, they don't like it. Well, you guess what? My way of protest. You don't like it, go somewhere else. You're going to protest with me? Fine. You're going to protest against me? Fine. You're going to make comments? Fine. Make the comments. Make the comments. And I got a problem with corporate media sometimes. I'm not trying to 
say corporate media is wrong all the damn time. They're trying to do their own damn slants as I tried to tell people left and right. We have our own ways. We have our own wants and things that we want to do. We piss people off left and right in the process. I wanted to say something about the flag situation. This is not Palestine. This is the United States of America. And that red, white, and blue will be put up. And even if it has to be burned in protest at times, it's still supported. Because we still have our rights. We still have our freedoms. But we also have responsibilities as Americans. I know, defend democracy, defend our own way of life, yeah. But also defend democracy across the globe, unfortunately. Because that's what superpowers do, don't they? We used to be that way a long time ago. But the problem is we look at ourselves to, as superpowers when we actually actually had a few countries being superpowers and trying to dominate everything. Now we've got every, every other country doing the same shit. Well, welcome to reality. Welcome to reality. We don't like it. It sucks for other people, but you know what? Shit happens. We deal with it. We're functioning. That doesn't mean we're going to be functioning correctly. We're just functioning. Or not functioning very much. So now, at 4 o'clock in the morning, roughly, they're going to be talking about things and changes that have been happening. One little note. Southwest Airlines have been operating on a 35-year-old computer operating system, Windows 3.1, for their networking. You believe they came out unscathed regarding that system crash? They didn't update their computer systems. They still ran with the program, literally. While everyone else is working on the XP and higher than that, and had the network crash on them, the corporate networks, Southwest Airlines had been operating. Jammed, but operating. But at least their systems didn't crash. Don't mess with something that actually works. You'll be surprised. I'm still operating with other programs that probably were deleted and extinct already, but, you know, it still works. At least some of it anyway. That being said...